morning. Welcome to class. My name is Shelly. My um, students usually call me Shelly K or Uma, um, sometimes Mama as well. Um, today I'd like to introduce you to some yin poses. Some, some of these yin poses are going to be helpful as far as applying them to the sequencing I teach in vinyasa classes. So you may want a block or a strap if this is something you normally would incorporate in your vinyasa class and then it can also help you integrate it when you're practicing vinyasa with me as well. So with that said, if you haven't had a chance, I hope you have a comfortable seat. We're going to close our eyes and draw our attention inward and just become aware of the subtleties of the physical body. If your day's been anything like mine, it's probably already been really busy. So let's become present and move into this place called feel. Start to connect with your own heart. Connect with me. Connect with the world around you. It's pretty common that when um, we're in worried times that we may hold our breath. So if that is the case for you, use a big belly breath to release any tension that you're sort of holding in your core. We're going to apply some of that today in this yin class, okay? So with that said, we're going to start off in fire toes. We're going to come face the top of the mat. I personally like to do fire toes with the block underneath my knees. But the idea is, is that your feet are going to come together. You're going to come onto the balls of your feet and lean back. Now, if this is too much, then grab your block. There are two levels to choose from. Level number one is like, I don't know, grande in the Starbucks world. And then vente is when you elevate it to the next level. And what it does is it moves you further back onto the pelvic bowl, puts less pressure on the toes. So the closer your knees are to the ground, the more intense. The farther your knees are from the ground, the less intense. We're just going to take a big breath in and sort of soften into it. And again, we're working on applying that sense of awareness that we started off with. Now, if the tension begins to build, it's okay. Maybe you need to back out a little bit more by placing your fingertips on the ground and leaning back more. Learning how to back out versus quitting. If that's not enough, we're almost done. So if you're keeping track of time, Maybe you can just sort of alternate back and forth and use the movement to release some of the tension. If you feel like you could go a little bit deeper, then lower the block and then soften further. There's going to be one more breath here. Uh, and let's release. You will not need the block for this one. So you can just place it to the side and lower both of your knees down on the ground and place the tops of your feet on the floor. Now as you do this, we're just going to lift the left knee up and elevate it. Now you can also take your right hand behind you for support. Pull the left knee in with your hand. And then you can also alternate where the left hand goes back and the right arm comes forward and you pull the right knee up. Four more, take your fingertips all the way back, lift your chest up, and then lean back with both knees up. Now, don't limit your range of motion. If you have the ability to bring your knees all the way up towards your chest, then keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. We're going to hold for about five breaths. Keep breathing. 
Maybe you elevate the chest a little bit more. Uh, let's release. The knees will come down to the mat. Walk your hands towards the top for tabletop position. You may want to start to extend your feet out, just getting some flexion and extension through the feet, especially if they were feeling a little tight. And then do the other side as well, where you'll extend the right leg. Heel, ball, toe, keeping the range of motion going in our feet. We're getting ready to go into lizard pose. So coming into down dog is probably the best transition. And if you bring your right hand closer towards the left hand, that will even help more with the transition. Coming up onto your tippy toes will help with the transition. The right foot will come to the outside of the right hand. Now as you lean a little forward so the knee is over the toe, drop your left knee down to the ground and then soften your left foot. You can either stay on your hands. That's always a great option. Another option is props. Placing both two blocks down is always helpful. It makes the surface a little bit bigger. And then you can place both of your hands down on the ground and take a big breath in and a big breath out. Now while we're here, if you're still feeling additional tension or you're starting to notice that your left hip is dropping towards the floor, then what I'd like you to do is back out, take that one block and sort of place it in an angle so that you can rest your thigh on the block. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep your hips a little bit more even towards each other. You can turn your second block now so that it's horizontal and place both elbows down. And we're going to hold this for a couple of breaths as well. So the idea is you want to have your hips even to each other the whole time so that there's an equal stretch that goes up the spinal column out the top of the head. And I talk about this a lot in the vinyasa classes. So here is an opportunity for us to sort of connect with that. And if you'd like to open up the right hip a little bit more, you could take your right hand, place it on that hip, and encourage it to open, no pressure, and then bring your right forearm back down to the mat. One more big breath here. Press your left hand into the mat and the right hand as well. That block that's underneath your left thigh, you're going to extend it towards the back of your mat for one-legged fixed sperm. So as you lean back, you're going to sit on top of that block. And you'll notice that my left foot is the top of my left foot still down on the ground. And my knees are in alignment to each other. I'm going to flex the right foot. Now the hips are supported, so I'm sitting on a block. I'm going to elevate my spine from the pelvic bowl. So as I elongate my spine and I come forward, I can, I can automatically start to feel it in my calf. Now you can extend your fingertips out in front of you. And as you inhale, lengthen your chest up towards the sky. Keep softening into the stretch. Now the more active my foot is, the more in alignment it is with the physical body, the more the, the stretch will come up right up the center of the leg channel and into the pelvic bowl. So we're going to take a big breath in and a big breath out. And then see how far we can go into softening into this experience. Notice where your drishti is, whether you chose to close your eyes, if you're looking towards the top of your mat. Try not to let the mind wander off. One more breath here.
And walk your hands back in. Let's go ahead and release that block. We're going to slide forward a little bit more. Now as we go back, here's your two blocks again. You can take the block behind you, right? So it's going to go right where the bra strap would go between just below the scapulas. And then this is going to support our head at the same time. So as you lean back, you can use your two hands to sort of support that action. Work on squaring off your hips. And then lift the chest. Now once you've got where you want to go, you take your block and you place it underneath your head and you find your center. Now this is too much pressure on the left foot. Take your right foot, place it down on the ground and work on squaring off your hips so that you can start to release any tension. The knees closed off, so that should be safe. And then the idea is to work on finding that space between the pelvic bowl, the right side of the body, and the left side of the body. So you can start to soften the whole entire leg. And then once again, close your eyes and draw your attention inward. The great thing about the practice is, is that every 15 seconds we create new muscle memory. Things are shifting whether we're aware of them or not. There's one more breath. And as we back out of this pose, start with the top of the head. You can use the strength of your upper body to push you up. Then you'll extend your right leg out. We'll grab that one more block because we will take this left leg and externally rotate it. Now you're going to take your block, place it underneath the right thigh so that there's this elevation of the pelvic bowl and this is going to take pressure off of the knees as well. We're going to lengthen the spine just like we did earlier. So it comes from the pelvic bowl shifting forward and you'll extend your hands all the way out in front of you. Taking a big breath in, now either your hands can stay on the mat or you can drop your elbows down to the ground. The idea is to be present to the minute details that are going on within the physical body at the same time, to the rhythm of your own breath. Now, if the foot wants to turn in, you can encourage it to turn back out, softening. One more breath here. And we'll walk our hands back in. You may need to slide that left knee in a little bit as you release this prop. Lean all the way over so that the left leg comes out. Oh, shake your legs out a little bit because it feels so good. Circle the ankles if you'd like as well. And we'll get ready to do the other side. So helicoptering, let's go into downward facing dog. And we'll walk it in and we'll walk it out. And getting ready to do the other side. You'll take your left hand over towards the right side of the mat. Maybe your thumbs and your index fingers touch so that you create like a heart. And the left leg will come up and it'll go through to the outside of the left hand. You can always toe heel it away from you if that's helpful, or maybe you need to bring it in a little bit. But you know, we have all these great mats now. You can just look at the line on your mat and make sure that the right leg's on the right side of the room and the left leg's on the left side of the room and everybody's in their own lane. From here, we'll take a nice deep breath in. 
and we'll walk our hands out. And the reason we want to do this is because we want the, the length of our torso to be extended when we go into the pose. And if our hands are too close, we'll actually limit that range of motion. Now again, like we talked about earlier, if that right hip is rotating towards the floor and we want it to be even, we'll grab our plop, prop. We'll take that right thigh bone, lean back with it so that you can get the prop underneath it. And you'll find that space. And then you extend your arms back out. It will definitely change the way the stretch feels in the physical body. I think sometimes there is this illusion that the posers are supposed to be super big. And we can get caught up in the theatrics of the practice. So big breath in. And again, connect with that tailbone to the top of the head, making space. One more big breath lengthen. And we'll walk our hands back in. Take that same block, slide it behind you so that it can go underneath the left glute. As we walk our hands back, remember that the block has many levels. So it can be as high as you need it to be or as low as you need it to be in order for it to be active. And heck, if you're at home and you've got pillows or bolsters or cushions, then, then by all means use that as well. Once you feel like you're set up and your knees are close together, then you wanna lean forward towards that foot. So again, we're gonna elevate through the pelvic bowl and start to walk our fingertips all the way out in front of us. Inhale, lengthening the spine. And then exhale, softening into it. Keep your foot engaged so that you can feel the deeper stretch. One more breath. Can you go a little bit further? Walk your hands back in. We'll go ahead and remove the block out from underneath us. I'm just gonna scoot a little bit closer to the top of the mat. And then you have your two props. So again, you wanna set them up so it's almost like a little mini sofa. Now you can also place the left foot down on the ground. What that does is it sort of alleviates. You can move the pelvic bowl around a little bit and see if you can get a little bit deeper into your stretch. And then from there, start to lie back. Remember that having a bolster can be so helpful here because it will elevate the spine even more. So if prop, the blocks are not enough for you, and then get something that or elevates you even higher. But you do want to try to have your hips flush to each other. So try to relax into that stretch. And we'll just do a couple of breaths here.
One more breath. I love this practice because even if I start off stiff, I can feel myself soften. And then I know it's real. So it might be easier to transition out by extending the left leg and then using the strength of your arms to come out. Again, you can support key, try to keep that knee closed as you move it outward. And then we'll grab the block. We'll place it underneath the thigh bone so that there's a little bit more hip flexion there. You can see where it is. And then maybe scoot it in a little bit more. We want to go down the center line. So as we move our hands all the way out in front of us, we're gonna take a big breath in and again, work through the pelvic bowl and the actions of that as we extend our arms all the way out. Continuing to keep softening into the experience. Again, if you have the range of motion, the forearms will come down. But ideally, we wanna focus on the left leg being externally rotated. That's what we wanna feel. Is that happening? So be sensitive to that you don't go so far that your body closes in on you. We really wanna try and keep it open. So it doesn't have to be a big pose to get the full expression of it. One more breath here. Again, work on that elevating of the pelvic bowl. And walk your hands back in. From here, you can release the prop. Have your hand grab onto the ankle and bring it through for a nice little forward fold. So you can shake your legs out if you'd like to do that. That can be very helpful. You can circle. For me, it's always about the, the sensations in my feet more than it is anything else. So the idea in this next forward fold though is we wanna have a full body experience. And sometimes there's confusion that our mindset is that the forward fold is in the hamstring or it's in our glute or it's in our lower back. But I'd like to introduce you to the concept that it's actually a full body experience. So what I mean by that is it starts at the arch of the foot and then it sort of works its way up the leg channels, around the back body, and then all the way to the forehead. So there are many that go with the school of thought that might be taking this class today. And you need the block at your feet to get the bigger stretch. So that's an option. For others, and what I want to introduce today is just taking your block, making it a little bit more narrow, and placing it underneath your knees. Then we're gonna move the fleshy part of the bum at the same time so that there isn't anything binding us. And as we walk our torso forward, we'll soften our body into the experience. Now your forearms are gonna stay really close to you because this is not about straining. It's about softening. So when we tuck the chin into the chest and we sort of soften the physical body, it gives us a little bit more range of motion. And this is that space between what uh, the Yoga Sutras would say is effort and ease. Finding your ease in your practice is when you learn how to soften into an expression of anything. The effort is just the discipline itself in showing up on a regular basis. So we just take a nice big breath in and we just sort of soften into it. And we're gonna hold this for a couple of breaths.
One more breath here. And we'll walk our hands back in. Remove the block. And from here, you're just going to roll all the way back into final savasana. Now, as you roll back, let your feet fall open and your arms come out to your side. Draw your attention inward. And what I'd like you to do is keep your attention on the sensations your legs have. Maybe you can feel the blood flowing through them. Maybe you can feel the heat that's coming off of them. Without labeling what the sensation is, just stay in connection with it. We'll place our feet on the floor and we'll roll over to the right side. And we'll come up into a comfortable seat. Keeping our attention inward. We'll bring our hands to prayer at the center of the chest. Grateful for this new day, its beauty and its light, and a chance to begin again. May we all be freed from yesterday's limitations, and today may we be reborn. Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace. From my heart to yours, namaste. Say hi, Henry. Uh, I will be teaching a vinyasa sequence this week, or maybe next, depending upon when you get a chance to check it out. And it'll also incorporate this same flow. Um, so I hope you'll join me. Have a great day. From Henry and I, namaste.